welcome to Simply Painting in Watercolours. I'm Frank Clark, and for this little lesson, we're going to paint some fruit. But before we do that, let's very quickly run through some of the materials we're going to require. And the first thing, of course, is the paint. It's watercolour and it's student quality. And we're using ultramarine, raw sienna, lemon yellow, alizarin crimson, and burnt umber. Just those five tubes. That's all. All right? We have our large brush, which is our Simply Painting goat hair brush and we have our small brush which is our rigger. The rest of the materials are water in a jar, some cloths to clean our brush on, we have a palette which we'll talk about later and we have our paper. Our paper once again is a 140 pound watercolour paper. I'm using a large sheet. You only need to use a sheet this size here which is 14 by 10. All right? Okay, let's talk about have some more fun. What do we mean by that? We mean horizon, sky, middle and foreground. And that's the method we use to paint all our little pictures in Simply Painting. Okay? And that applies if you're painting fruit. It doesn't matter whether it's a landscape or whether it's a still life or what it is. We apply the same. And we'll come to that as we go along. So let's just look at what we're going to paint. And we have an apple and some grapes. Now, how would we break down an apple and some grapes to make it simple? Let me show you. First, what do we need? A pencil. And this is why I've got my large sheet. I'm going to doodle a bit. All right? And the, my doodling consists of this. I'm going to draw, first of all, a horizon line. Now, you can draw it with your ruler normally. I just want to draw it quickly, so I'll sketch it in. That's the first thing, horizon. Now, an apple. Think of an apple. And now forget it. <laughs> exactly the same as everything else, carrots and the rest. Let's think of a circle, a freehand circle. Well, there's a freehand circle. And lo and behold, if we look back quickly to our picture, it looks awfully like that apple, doesn't it? Now the grapes. And how would we do those? Well, again, simplify. Why don't we draw a triangle? So we've got a circle and a triangle, an apple and some grapes. Isn't that simple? Because we can make little circles in there to create our grapes, which we'll do on the paper. All right, that's enough about that. Let's get on with the painting. I know we're getting to the stage now where we're getting used to simply painting. We're saying, let's get started. I want to paint. I don't blame you. So do I. So what do we do first? Horizon. Absolutely right. Now, a horizon this time, having a quick look at our picture, we know it's pretty high up. It's not quite halfway. Never put your horizon line directly in the center, halfway up, because it'll break the picture in half and look silly. That's the only reason. It just doesn't look well. Now, having said that, many of the great artists, in fact, did, but uh, I think it looks better. OK, there's a horizon line. And now, remember what we did with our little sketch, our little doodle? Exactly the same thing. Take a quick look at our picture, and we see that we have a circle. Well, let's put in the circle. It's about there somewhere, isn't it? Now, freehand. Don't try to draw this with a compass. They don't make apples with compasses. They're, they're off. They're not quite round. OK? Now, what about our triangle? Well, our triangle, if we look at it, is almost to the top of the apple. We're looking at the picture just for a second again. OK. And it comes across like that. And then it comes down and it kind of hangs off the table, doesn't it? Down to about there. So it, this is very rough. I'm not a, it, it, You could even call it a kind of a fat carrot, but it's not. It's a triangle. OK? All right. Now, how do we make the grapes? Circles, again. One. Two, and you can overlap them. Look, three, four, and they can go outside that triangle slightly. And don't make them all exactly, you know, th that they don't interlock, if you like. Have them like that. Look, not too many. And come down here, one there, one, ah, one there somewhere. One maybe there and one there. And we maybe have one there. There's our, there's our, little, our little bunch of grapes. Simple, isn't it? OK, let's go back to the picture again. Now, there are two stalks sticking out of the top. But well, we'll do them later. We'll concentrate, first of all, on our apple and our grapes. What do we do next? Well, now, here's another little secret of painting for you. I mentioned to you masking fluid. And we're going to use it this time. And let me tell you what it is. Masking fluid is a latex rubber. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint over my little circle or my apple and my little triangle or my circles. And I'm going to 
leave them there, let them dry. And what happens is this, that the masking fluid will dry on the paper and once it does, we can paint over it. And of course the paper is protected by the masking fluid. Isn't that clever? So we can paint in our background and then when we're finished the background, we can come along, we can rub out our masking fluid and we should be left with white outlines of our apple and our grapes. Isn't that clever? See? Okay, let's do it. Now, let me tell you a little bit about masking fluid. First and foremost, be careful with it, because if it spills on you, it's a latex rubber, it'll stick to you. And I've had many a time when I've gone home with a, so rubber trousers on me, unintentionally. The second thing is, it can be quite difficult to keep your brush clean first, and secondly, it can damage a good brush. So what I propose you do is you get an old brush and keep it to use for your masking fluid. And the first thing you do is you wet the brush, then you dry it. That's a contradictory in terms, isn't it? But there is still some moisture left on the brush. And then, holding it firmly, because the lid is off it, and Murphy's Law always says if it's going to go wrong it will, and now you dip in and away you go. And let's, let's paint in all the way over our apple or our circle, whichever you like, and we're going to paint in the grapes. But just the grapes themselves. Do you see what I mean by that? Just the circles. Do not fill in the whole thing. Leave little gaps here and there between them. Okay? Don't worry about the pencil marks, by the way. They'll disappear when we start to rub out the uh, masking fluid, I promise you. Now make sure you get nice little, nice little grapes. There you get nice little grapes. And they're nice. And we're leaving little gaps between the grapes. And you're probably wondering why, but you'll see later. Don't be ahead of me now. Now, I hope you're all trying to do this. It's very simple. I promise you this is the easiest and simple picture you've ever painted. And in fact, everybody can do it, as you know. If you've never painted before, it's often an advantage because you're starting off with no prior knowledge. And little knowledge can often be a dangerous thing, they say. Isn't that right? Now, look, we're filling in. We're nearly there. Okay, we nearly got it. Now, if you know, make sure that we've got all the grapes covered because if you don't, when we apply the paint, what will happen? The paint will get through and there'll be little dots all over your apple or your grapes and you don't want that. Now, we have finished with the masking fluid. I tell you this, put the top back on it. <laughs> Clean your brush well in the water. You notice the water might be turning a little cloudy. This is because I'm washing off the masking fluid, but that doesn't matter. You don't have to rush off now and change the water. That water is perfectly okay to paint your picture with. And in fact, you've probably noticed that I never change the water. I use a big jar, and I've got enough water in that to allow me to paint the full picture without having to change it. Okay, so once it gets muddy, that doesn't mean you've got to change it. Okay, enough about that. Now, we need to dry this. So, of course, we have our old pal, the Master Blaster. Now, if you don't have one, give yourself at least 10 minutes for this to dry. Because if this masking fluid is not dry and you put the brush on it, you are going to have a disaster because it will stick to it. The brush will, and you'll have masking fluid all over your brush to ruin it. Okay? I can't emphasize that enough. And also, another little point the masking fluid that I use is yellow in color. There are different types of masking fluid. There's some which is clear white and you can't see it. So you put it on the paper and it's, it's gone. You can't find it. Use the, the yellow tinted one. You'll see it. It's easier. Okay. Now I'm going to mix up some of the paint for the background and then we'll come back to that again and just make doubly sure that it's dry. All right. So the next thing to do now is we're going to assume that that's dry or almost dry. And we're going to now paint in our background. Now let's look at it. Okay, very quickly. So we've painted again the horizon in exactly the same way we're going to paint the sky, which is the second thing. Have some more fun. Remember that. So what colour do we need? Well, okay, we need raw sienna. Let's put it out. And when you're putting your colours out in your palette, it's a good idea if you put your colours together, the ones you're going to mix. So in other words, if, if you're going to make two, say you've got a yellow and a blue, you put them together and then you can mix them and you get your green. Don't put them different ends of the, the palette. The second thing, of course, is that uh, put them around the side. Why would you do that? Because if you, if you put them around the side, you've got all the centre to mix, haven't you? If you put them in the middle, you've nowhere to make up your paint. Okay, that's enough about that. Let's get on with it. Now, I'm going to put a little bit of yellow out as well. 
because I'm going to make this background a yellowy raw sienna, all right, with a little bit of burnt umber in it. They're the three colours. Now let's give this another dry because I'm always to be sure to be sure. It won't take a minute and it's well worth the effort, I promise you. I'm giving this a good dry now because if it doesn't, I told you now, this is the one disaster above all else in watercolour. That if your masking fluid is not dry and you go over that, the brush will actually stick to it and it'll ruin the whole picture. Okay, I think we're grand now. Look, I'm feeling it. It's tacky, but at the same time, it's not coming off in my finger and therefore it's dry. All right, good. Big brush into the water, swish it around. And let's think of the sky. Now we're going to mix some raw sienna and a little bit of the yellow. I'm heading mainly for the raw sienna. So I'd say you're probably looking at three times as much raw sienna as you have yellow. Now there's another thing I'm not doing this time. I am not wetting the paper first. Normally we wet the paper, don't we, and we put in the sky. But I want a simple graded wash this time. I want it all the one colour. Look, there is no clouds in it. So we can start from the top, look, and just work down like that. <laughs> this is really, I should paint a door, I promise you. <laughs> so if nothing else, you'll become a wonderful door painter, won't you? Now, just keep adding it in and pulling it down the page. And of course, you start from the top and come down. You know why you do that, because... Now look, oh, for I've forgotten all about my apples and my grapes now. Now, when I get to the middle there, the, at the horizon line, I'm going to just add in a little more burnt umber in the left-hand side. And if you look up quickly at our picture, you'll see that it's slightly darker. Just slightly. Look, just to give it a bit of a... It's only shading it. And the way you get light and shade on the wall. That's, a, that's all. Look. And they're complete strokes. Remember how we painted the water? Once I've started, you don't stop. All right? And we're down to just this time, just below the horizon line. Just a, just a tiny bit below, because I don't want to have to come in here later. I want to leave the edge of our table clean. Do you understand that? Of course you do. All right. Let's switch our brush around again. Now you'll notice our cloths. These are the same cloths we use all the way through and they hold gallons and gallons of water. They're marvellous. Wet your brush, dry your brush and into the thing again. Now, back to the picture again. You'll notice that our table or our shelf or whatever these, these pieces of fruit are on, it's darker. All right. How do we make it darker? Absolutely right. You add in some burnt umber. You're probably miles ahead of me now, are you? Yes, and I wish he'd get on with it and stop talking. I want to see him painting pictures. But this one is a great old friend of mine. And once you paint one piece of fruit, you can paint them all. You can, you can think up your old ideas for bananas and everything else. Grapefruit, the lot. Simplify them always. Okay, now I've mixed up a good bit of paint there now. Now I'm going to run and half and half raw sienna and burnt umber. Always mix your paint, by the way, on your palette. Don't mix it on the watercolour. Now, brush flat on paper. You're probably sick of this by now. And as if you were painting water, I want you to run right across there. Now, you want to be sure that the paint above the horizon line is dry. So let's hope it is, or it'll, what'll happen is it'll spread up like blotting paper. Remember I said that to you? Now, I've gone off the side of the thing a little bit. That doesn't make any difference. Who cares? Let's dry that. Because we're going to give it another run. And you notice it's a different colour. And we've painted it in a different direction, haven't we? That was because we wanted downward strokes here and cross strokes there. Have you got it? Of course you have. Now, as it dries, by the way, it lightens. And this is normal with watercolour. Because, whereas, with acrylic, it darkens. With watercolour, it lightens. So you make allowance for that. But it's always safer to put it on light, and then you can always darken it. But if you put it on too dark, you've got an awful job then to lighten it. Although you can do it, but not yet, not yet. They come later. Don't give yourself the job of having to repair your watercolours before you need to. Now. Again, we're going to go over this because it wasn't quite dark enough. So on and across like that, look. One swipe and one swipe and one swipe and one swipe. That's it. That's our table complete. 
Okay. I'm going to give this one more quick dry. Now we're getting something here which is very attractive. If you notice, we've got two nice stripes on there. That was just pigment on the brush, but it looks nice, doesn't it? It looks like the, the cloth or whatever it is. Eh, there's some kind of a pattern on it. All right. Now I'm hoping that this is dry and very dry because I'm now going to start looking at taking this off. Now how do we remove the masking fluid? We do it with a rubber. But before we do, remember I said to you I left little bits in between. Do you remember that? Now why did I do that? I'll show you. Now let's put out some more paint. Now the darkest colour we have on our palette here is blue. Let's get it there. There we go. Blue and brown. And by mixing the two of those together we get a good dark shade. So let's do that. Right? Now you're probably wondering, what on earth do we want those two colours for? Let me show you. This is the little trick. This is where our old friend the masking fluid really comes into its own, I'll tell you. Now I'm creating a blue-brown colour. And with that blue-brown colour, I'm going to paint that all over this. The centre of our grapes. You're probably wondering, what on earth am I doing? Is the man mad? He's, look at, he, he's ruining the whole thing. Big brush, right down along like that, just in the centre of it. Okay? Now, it looks like a right mess at the moment, doesn't it? And I'm going to put some down there as well. Look. Right on the, right out there like that. And, f now. <laughs> I've ruined it. No, I haven't. Watch. Dry it again. Okay. There's a lot of drying in this one, isn't there? But be careful. Make sure it's dry. That's the probably the eleventh commandment. <laughs> Certainly when painting in watercolours. There isn't any doubt that you'll ruin more watercolours by not having them dry enough. I think that's nearly dry now. Okay. Oh yes, there isn't any doubt about that. Now, you can feel, ah, that's pretty good. All right. Now, how do we take that off? A rubber, an eraser, right? Or your finger, but I find it pretty sore on my finger, so I use an eraser. And what I do, I rub towards the centre. Don't rub that way, because if the paper happened to tear, well then you'd, what would you do? You'd leave a big white stripe up your, up your wonderful picture. See that? This is like when you come back from your holidays, isn't it? You can remove the tan with an eraser, huh? Look. And you'll notice when I get this thing off, look, it's all coming off in one. That's the idea. I've left a lot of little black spots, haven't I, here and there. They're the little shadows. Wasn't that clever? Now we can throw away that. And there we are. We're ready for action now. So let's now get out what we need to paint yellow. I have some there on the other side of my palette. And this time we need some alizarin crimson because if we look at our picture once more, we'll notice that this, this is a nice red apple, isn't it? It's a rosy red apple. It's a green rosy red apple. So off we go. And let's put in some of that. Now, there we go. Let's take some blue first into the centre there. Blue and yellow. And what does blue and yellow give us? Yes, of course you got it. It gives us a nice yellowy green, doesn't it? Yellowy green. Da, da, da. Now I'm painting around the grapes obviously because I don't want yellow and green grapes, do I? Oops, I'm missing the wall. You want it? This is inky, quite inky. Okay, you got it? This is like painting by numbers, isn't it? Well, that's all it is. But they're your numbers. <laughs> Nobody else did them first. They're all yours. Now, OK, I'm not going to do much more there now for a moment. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to add in some of my nice red rosy, because I want a red rosy apple, don't I? Look, and by filling it in there like that, 
Ah, this is a lovely apple. You'd almost feel like eating it, wouldn't you? Hmm? Now you can go round the outside of that later and round it off a bit, but at the moment we're just going to swish it in there. Ah, that's a right, fine apple. What a fine apple. Now, that's the apple done for the moment. Let's get back now our grapes. And our grapes are purple. Purple-ish, aren't they? How do I make purple? Yep. Blue. You got it. Blue and alizarin crimson. And there it is, a nice purpley. These are black grapes. But black grapes are purple, aren't they? That's why they're called black grapes, isn't it? All right. Let's fill in our grapes. Now, I'm going to leave a little bit of white on each of these grapes on the side that's the lightest. Now, let me show you what I mean by that. Look there, a little bit of light hitting the grape there and it'll probably hit it there. So let's leave it out. Save it. I'm going to fight it later. You got the idea? I hope you're looking at me now and you're watching this because this is easy. It's all easy, isn't it? Of course it is. Ah, da, da, da. You can sing as well. Now don't go too near the apple because you've got to leave a little bit of a gap between the two that's because it's wet, right? You got it? See, so I'm going to leave a little gap there. I can fill that gap in later. But just at the moment, because if the two pigments touch, we got trouble. Dun -dum -dun -dum -dun -dum -dum -dum. This is great fun, isn't it? Only just filling in grapes. Grape filling. It's great fun, grape filling. Now I'm going all the way down along here. Look, I, I'm, I'm leaving. I'm leaving a little white splash on each of them, right? If you had a slightly larger brush, you can do this quicker. If you happen to have, in fact, I'll tell you what you can do. You can also use the you know, the brush you used to for your for your masking fluid. Yeah, and you could use that. Let me try it. Show you. Look quickly. All right, one, two. Look now we can bash them in. You see, I, this is because of speed. Otherwise, I'll run out of time. You won't. You can take your time. But I just have to get these things finished. I've got more to paint. Yes. See the idea? So let's get some more blue. Da, 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 da. It's great fun, this, isn't it? <laughs> so easy. And you thought it was hard to paint. My goodness me. I'm generally dabbing around now. Remember now as well, we had to... Uh, have two little stalks. Where the little stalks go, don't have the two stalks going in the one direction. One stalk goes that way and the apple stalk comes out that way. And then out of that apple stalk, if we look at it very quickly, we saw that there's a little uh, a leaf. So I'm going to mix up some paint. I'm taking some raw sienna, some yellow and a little tiny bit of blue just to make a greeny colour. Look, And then in there, look, that's all a, a leaf is and just fill it in. Don't be too particular with this. 